Welcome. This is David Bowles, Human Meme. Today's topic, Kage Musha and the Rashomon Effect. Cinema director and dedicated auteur Akira Kurosawa died in 1998 at the age of 88. Kurosawa had a 60-year history in creating some of the best movies of all time. Kurosawa is a right legend in the history of Japanese moviemaking. One of Kurosawa's best movies was Rashomon, made in 1950, and that film used a unique storytelling device that has been stolen and reused ever since. The idea of Rashomon is that it is told from the point of view of four different characters, all who retell the same story from their own different vested interests. Four unique stories, same event, four different truths of fact in evidence. And since Rashomon's debut in 1950, every crime story ever told, both real and imagined, uses the Rashomon plot device to tell conflicting stories of the same event from the point of view of the killer, witnesses, accomplices, and surviving victims. That storytelling method is still vital and vibrant today. And the movie Rashomon asks us actively, is our memory at fault, or are we all purpose? purposefully skewing the truth in order to serve our own selfish needs and to remain indelible and innocent. The grand success of Kurosawa's Rashomon is in its modern colloquialism in today's society. Some call this the Rashomon effect. This modality forbids the absolute in favor of the unwitting unknowing, the malleable witness in absence of a verifiable truth. Now, moving beyond the specific movie Rashomon and into this Rashomon effect, understanding ambiguous situations takes nonlinear thinking and some of the greatest human conundrums taken against us will require the Rashomon effect in order to be solved. The Rashomon effect is not just thinking outside the box, but thinking factually a thousand different ways with 10,000 provable results. We will solve the conundrum of living with multiple ways of knowing and a hundred points of access to the same exit. Complexity in ambiguity is dangerous and the de facto way of the world. We simply, in order to become analogous and a scattering of definitions, become a singular truth. And so in the absence of evidence, any version of a fact becomes the truth, and everything is disqualified in the individual observation of a pericardial reverberation. Social pressure to come to a final consensus is also dangerous because the innocent become framed and the guilty become part of the determining contextual majority. If you have not yet seen the movie Rashomon, I urge you to find a copy so you will have skin 
in this game. When facts become obsolete and the minority begins to rule with majority favor. A long time ago, as a teenaged movie critic for KOLN KGIN TV, Lincoln and Grand Island, Nebraska, 10 11 strong, I reviewed a movie a week for the children's television program, Kidding Around. In 1980, I reviewed the movie Kagemusha, also directed by super genius Akira Kurosawa. Kagemusha roughly translates into English meaning a political deceptor. The movie is about a low-class hoodlum who pretends to be a dying Japanese feudal lord, sort of a mobster, in order to stop an attack against the family. And Kage Musha was a wonderful movie, and it still is a wonderful movie, and I enjoyed every moment of it. And at the time I was reviewing Kage Musha on TV, I was also working in radio at KFOR and KFRX. And at that time, Larry King was the overnight radio show on KFOR. Larry King was a great national radio host. Always interesting, great stories. He was rough and gruff. And he took live phone calls from regular, everyday callers. A few times a year, Larry King would have Chuck Rich, a Washington, D.C. movie critic for WTOP, now known as WUSA-TV, And Larry King would often remind us, his listeners, that Chuck Rich was disabled, and he worked from a wheelchair. Now, at that time in America, the dawning of the 80s, it was sort of rare to have a disabled person so routinely, and some may say boldly, represented in mainstream media. And that is a great credit to Larry King for being prescient and kind to celebrate Chuck Rich's authority beyond the flickering screen. Now, because Chuck Rich was an established movie critic, and I wanted to be one, I sent Chuck a letter, yes, a paper letter via the United States Postal Service, and Chuck wrote back to me, And we exchanged a few wonderful letters, and Chuck was entirely encouraging about my prospects and my desire to one day leave Nebraska for greater, greener fields. Chuck was a mentor and a friend. And so one night, Chuck was again a live guest on Larry King's overnight radio show. And Larry was on midnight to 5 a.m. weekdays. And I decided to pick up the phone and call into the show so I could ask Chuck a question about this new movie I had seen called Kagemusha. I was curious what Chuck thought about the movie. In those days, if you called into a radio show and you were serious and sounded sort of reasonable, you got on the air, because those national overnight radio shows wanted interesting conversation. I told the Larry King call screener I wanted to ask Chuck a question about a new Japanese movie I'd seen, and I was immediately put on the air. I wish I'd been prescient enough at the time to record that conversation. But for wishes and wants, none of us ride. Anyway, so you can imagine how 
friendly Larry King was when I started rambling on in my teenaged voice from Lincoln, Nebraska, over the phone about this Akira Kurosawa and Rashomon and Kagemusha. And I kept going on, not taking a breath, and I finally got around to asking if Chuck Rich thought that Kagemusha was as good as Rashomon and why. And I told Chuck, this was David Bowles calling. And Larry King thought I was messing with him and gibberizing him, and he hung up on me. I was devastated. I thought I was charming and entertaining. Larry King thought I was dumb and precious. After Larry King hung up on me, I quickly turned up my home radio. Larry King always yelled at his callers to turn down their radio because the delay between speaking live on the phone and listening via your radio confused people. And I heard the start of my call. And I was horrified at how young I sounded at 15 years old and how fast I was speaking and how right Larry King was to cut me off. And then I heard what I did not hear after Larry hung up on me. Larry started apologizing to Chuck. But Chuck Rich then saved me. Chuck told Larry King who I was and that I was a teenaged movie critic in the Midwest. And Larry King sort of grunted and relented and let Chuck continue on about me. And Chuck answered my question about Kage Musha in a warm and wonderful manner that was universal to every listener. And that meant everything to me. I was starstruck. Later, Chuck warned me in a letter to be more aware when I'm live on the radio and to not give too much information because it can be misunderstood as self-promotion. And, as ever and always, Chuck Rich was completely right. And so now you know my story about the Rashomon effect. Akira Kurosawa, Kagemusha, Larry King, and Chuck Rich, and me, and having it all connect with various points of view about who did what, and when, and why, and to whom, and for why sake and how none of it matters in the retelling end because it all makes a difference, and the Rashomon effect is in play in full force in the circle of concentric lives, all with a different story to tell, all with variations on a truth that does not exist. Yet, we all seek definition in purpose, and revelation from the flickering screen. And out of the darkness of disparate lives, we keep trying to connect through radio waves in the dead of the night, with Akira Kurosawa directing us all, still in charge of the human condition of us. Because Akira Kurosawa knew us better than we know ourselves now. Thank you for listening. Be a human meme.